Warm and hot hatches are a dime a dozen these days, but not everyone wants a hatch. If you're a sedan person, the affordable end of the performance market has been limited to the Hyundai Elantra Sport. At least, it was limited until now because that car's getting some competition and it's coming from within its home country. Meet the Kia Cerato GT sedan. Kia might be moving up market, but it's not asking premium money. The GT is priced from just $31,990 drive away and comes with essentially everything the company has to offer. Keyless entry, leather seats, a fancier 8-speaker audio system. The only option is metallic paint and even that costs just $520. From the outside, the GT stands out thanks to its more aggressive nose with a few subtle red highlights thrown in for good measure. The wheels are unique and there's more red goodness at the back. Oh, and twin pipes. How very sporty. I consider myself a hatchback guy, but there is no arguing with the practicality of this sedan. There's 520 litres of boot space with the rear seats up and with them folded. Well, Kia doesn't say how much there is with them folded, but suffice to say it's a lot. There's actually almost 100 litres more space in there than you get in the hatchback, which is really remarkable. When you take this suitcase out, you'll also notice there is a space saver spare under the floor. Things are pretty good back here. Headroom is good, even if you're tall, and average sized people can comfortably sit behind other average sized people in the front. Even I have decent legroom. You get air vents back here, bottle pockets in the doors, and a map pocket on the passenger side, but not on the driver's side for some reason. A little bit strange. Finally, there is this nice armrest with cup holders in the middle. Moving to the front, the Serato is a really nice place to spend time. These leather bucket seats are heated and cooled, and the flat bottom steering wheel is just a really nice object to hold. There's myriad storage options. You've got this massive bin here, cup holders, storage for your phone with wireless charging, and everything is just really nicely presented. It all looks really good. With that said though, there are a few cheap plastics. This here feels really scratchy, and the climate control doesn't look quite as upmarket as the rest of the interior. Small things, but they are worth mentioning. Infotainment comes courtesy of an 8-inch touchscreen, complete with factory navigation, smartphone mirroring, and DAB radio. It's clear, responds quickly, and is placed right in the driver's eye line. All good things. There's blind spot monitoring, autonomous emergency braking, lane keeping assist, a reversing camera. As the top spec model, this GT wants for nothing. If you've read our review of the Serato GT on caradvice.com, and you should have done that. If you haven't, well, go do it. You'll already know that the Serato GT handles really, really nicely. It's got really good body control, it sits nice and flat, and there's lots of grip from the Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tyres. That's expensive rubber to put on what is a warm performance car, so great marks to Kia for doing that. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not quite Volkswagen Golf GTI good, but the GTI is a $45,000, $46,000 car on the road, and this is $31,990 drive away, so it's not really fair to compare those two anyway. Now, remember these ads? <laughs> Honestly, the noise that those people are making would be preferable to the actual noise the car makes. I'm in sport mode at the moment, and it pipes in the engine noise through the speakers, and if I drop down to second... ..and put my foot down, you can hear that it's just so horribly, obviously faked. It's so contrived. It makes me furious and not want to drive the car in sport mode. Kia, make the engine sound good or don't bother. <laughs> Otherwise, and we're going to ignore the noise now, the engine's a really good little unit. It makes 150 kilowatts of power and 280 newton meters of torque. Those figures are the same as the i30 N-Line makes in the Hyundai Elantra Sport. And it does a really good job of being a chameleon in the way that you would expect an inexpensive performance car to. It's quiet and comfortable around town, it's got enough torque that it can just get the job done, and then when you hit the open road, although it's not a full-on firecracker, it's happy enough to rev out, it's got plenty of power and torque to really make it feel like you're going fast. It's hooked up to a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission. Now, that transmission isn't Volkswagen good, it's not nearly that quick on the upshifts or the downshifts, but it is much better than the early Hyundai and Kia iterations of the DSG that we've driven. It also is really good around town. There's no hunting or creeping at low speeds, and it doesn't feel jerky in the way that some dual clutches do. It does a really good job of just acting like a normal automatic gearbox. So that's a really good point to the Kia there. While we're talking about the city, the Serato GT is definitely firmer than a regular Serato around town, and you really notice it over potholes and bumps and slightly imperfect surfaces. Don't think that it's super uncomfortable though, because it isn't. It's perfectly comfortable for every day, and I actually quite like that it's a little bit firmer. It makes it feel like you're driving something more special than the average sedan.
So, the Serato GT. It's affordable, attractive, it handles nicely, and it's beautifully put together inside. I think I'd even take the sedan over the hatchback, which is a first for me, so well done all round, Kia. For more on the Kia Serato, make sure you head to caradvice.com, and to make sure you get all the latest videos from Car Advice, hit the subscribe button that's right about there.